check it out. We've just done a big update to the Urban Catechism. I'm looking forward to telling you all about it. All right, so the Urban Catechism, if you don't know, is a discipleship resource that we use on our council estate in Southwest London and is used by many others around the UK on both council estates and urban areas and even rural areas. People tell me it works in, in most areas. And it started off being a whole bunch of answers to the most common questions that I would get asked in my neighborhood, right? As a pastor, the questions that people would ask me in my neighborhood about God and everything, um, ended up turning into this thing here. Now we just done a big update to it because right now the world is uh, more aware of all the injustice that goes on and all the abuse that goes on and a lot of stuff that before used to be covered up kind of easily. Now with cell phones and everything, you know, camera phones, now there's so much evidence of all the injustice and abuse going out there. So we've updated the catechism to, to deal with that, to deal with some of the questions that people have about abuse and about injustice. And also to help you if you're taking someone through the catechism, to help you and the person you're taking through it to be more sensitive to the needs of vulnerable people and people who are hurting. So here's what we've done, because a lot of you have got the urban catechism already, right? And you might be worried thinking, oh, do we have to buy new catechisms? Especially some of you who've ordered a lot of them. And the answer is no, you don't, because this part has stayed the same. What we've changed is the teacher's guide. We've changed the teacher's guide, okay? So we've updated the teacher's guide, basically gone through it and put in sections to deal with abuse and injustice, right? And sometimes what that means is that um, sometimes there will be parts of the Bible that sometimes people have misunderstood and it's been used in a way that hasn't really helped people who are being abused and has actually hurt people. And so we've made sure in the catechism that we point that out so that, so that it protects people from misunderstanding what the Bible's saying. We've also put stuff in about what to do if you're doing the catechism with someone and they disclose to you that they've been abused, right? And so we've gone all the way through the teacher's guide, making sure that as you go through it, you are being equipped to be more sensitive, more caring with people who are abused and people who are facing injustice. And so that you can also help people where people are going through the Bible with you and they got questions and giving you pointers to help you take them through it appropriately. And it's my hope that as people go through this, that they in turn get to help their churches be safer places right? And that there will be less abuse. I'm talking about all the different kinds of abuse as well, yeah? We're talking about psychological abuse. We're talking about narcissism in churches. We're talking about um, physical abuse, you know, like, um, like domestic violence. And we're talking about sexual abuse, right? And so we're hoping that when you go through the teacher's guide, that you become better equipped for dealing with those things. And as more people in your neighborhood and more people in your church go through it, that you're able to create safer environments. And I basically got this idea from Mike Sloan. Mike Sloan is from Grace, an organization in the, in the United States that, um, that, uh, that help abuse victims, survivors. And um, there was a talk that Mike Sloan did at the Church as a Refuge conference. So big up uh, Jackie and Cliff Wright for arranging that conference. And Mike Sloan in his session said that we need to, in our ordinary discipleship in our churches, we need to be giving people Jesus's heart for the vulnerable. And I heard that and I was like, do you know what? That's so true. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through the urban catechism because I know loads of people are using it. And we're gonna make sure that it's in the warp and woof of the discipleship in the urban catechism, Jesus's heart for the vulnerable and, and so that people are better equipped to help people who are dealing with abuse and who are dealing with injustice. So in the urban catechism, we also cover some stuff about racial injustice and about sexism. So 
the, the, the version of the teacher's guide now that covers this is version 109. So if you've got a teacher's guide and you're wondering, is this in my one? Up here will be a number, right? And there's, there's now been 109 versions of the teacher's guide. And 109 is the latest version that, that has special sections on dealing with abuse and injustice. So that's it. Um, listen, we don't, we don't make a lot of money out of these, okay? Um, this is a family thing. My family, I printed this out and my family bound this today and my family tomorrow will walk to the post office and post this. So this isn't a money thing. Yeah, I'm not one of them guys trying to make money out of this. It's a resource that people say helps them and I'm just trying to make it better to be more useful. So um, if anyone wants to order it, you can go to our website, you know, uh, Urban Ministries org.uk and there's a, an order page and you can order the teacher's guide there and you will get version 109 anyone who orders it from now on uh, but if you don't want to order it that's cool as well you know like I say this isn't a money thing we just want to share the love the ways that God's helped us in our neighborhood and in our church trying to build a safe culture um, we're trying to pass that on to to other people there's lots of uh if you're wondering the kind of vibe of it, it's heavily influenced by Diane Langberg. So big shout out to Diane Langberg. Big sh shout out to Penny Freeman as well. She's mentioned in here. Her influence is in here as well. So thanks for that, Penny. All right. Uh, that's it for today. God bless.